So you're finding yourself using more and more lights and you get to a point where perhaps you can't easily do all wireless data from a single transmitter. So you buy another AKS and another and you link them together with a switch, but then you realize that you could really use some hard line DMX out to your fixtures when you're rigging overhead in a small stage because you have a big effect coming up and want to avoid latency issues. But it's becoming a mess and all of a sudden you have this eyesore hack job project you put together living in the middle of set to get your data to your lights. How do people deal with this mess of data on big film sets? Well, stay tuned because I'm gonna give you all the secrets. First, if you don't understand networking at all, I highly recommend stopping this video and first watching a few videos from this playlist on my YouTube channel that go over all the basics. If you're completely new, I also have a video that takes you from knowing absolutely nothing about lighting to controlling some of the most popular lights you'll find on a film set in less than 25 minutes. So check out the links in the description below. Believe me, this will make a lot more sense if you watch those first. Also, while you're surfing my channel, help me out by subscribing and giving me a like so that I can make more of these videos for you. Let's get started. So imagine you're shooting at a stage and it's a set where the main characters gather in their high-tech office. You're gonna hang a bunch of lights above the set, around the set, and on the day of shooting, you'll likely bring in lights from your truck package to dance around the cameras and actors. Where do you even begin? Let's play this through. Everything starts with a plot because without it, you don't have a blueprint for what you are doing and where you should put things. So let's look at a set that I've updated a bit and I'm gonna show you how I would lay out the power and data infrastructure. You can see we have a site here on the left that we are uplighting for night work with Chroma Q Studio Force 2s. There are also some lusters in the back to pick out certain elements on the backdrop. We then have a ton of top light from S360s, S120s, and S60s in skirts, some directly overhead going through a soft muslin ceiling in the office, and some enhancing light through windows. We have some big T12 Fresnels to punch through some of these skylights and give us nice hard backlights through the main side. And then inside, we have some downlight practical overheads and LEDs, some hanging fixtures, and some hallway downlights, as well as sconces, which in this case are all tungsten, so they would need to hit dimmers. With all of that laid out, we have a good idea of how we wanna lay out both power and data. Now, there are two ways to do power. The first way, which is how we used to do it, old school, is you'd run the heavy cable, which is your two watt and four watt, from the studio mains or your generator to your dimmer room where they would power your dimmer racks. These had to be outside the stage or in another room because they were so noisy. You then run Socko, which is a big cable that contains six individual dimmer circuits from the dimmer racks to every corner of your set. But because we have LEDs that don't plug into dim circuits, now you have to run additional Socko that is hard power or switchable power, not dim lines. So you're essentially running two types of Socko to key areas around the set. Furthermore, for all of your T12s, you'd need to run separate 100 amp runs to your truss of T12s and then to the corners of the set here for plugging in any you need to add along the ground. Again, it's one long cable run from the dimmer room to a point in the stage times however many lines you need to put there. That's a lot of long cable runs, which are easily 100 to 200 feet. And it honestly takes forever to install because you're going up in a lift, you're crossing over to the grid, you're throwing it to the other side, you're moving the lift for each run of cable, unless you have some sort of catwalk and then your set is usually built in a way you still have to wrangle a bunch of cables overhead or through the set. It's a lot of work. The other way, which is how a lot of sets rig now, is that you run your two watt and four watt to the set where you branch out to little dimmers that are scattered around set. Instead of the big touring dimmer racks, you have rat packs. The dimmers are right on set. And the only reason this can work is that they are silent. Rat packs and LEDs kind of revolutionize how we typically lay out power infrastructure on today's sets. So if I were to draw out the power runs using rat packs as my tungsten dimmers, 
I would have my main trunk of cable going to the center of set here up in this catwalk and then branch out on the ground all around set. Now, before you go ahead trying to copy something like this, I'm just showing you where the main power boxes would go. To properly connect all of this, you need to calculate the amperage that each box is using to power the lights connected to it and make sure that you are well within the limits of your cable run. There are six T12s alone, which if bulbed with 12,000 watt lamps would run you each 50 amps per leg. And each fixture is going to use two legs. In the US, across 208 volts. In a stage like this, we would have multiple services to power the set. Or if you are in a nice stage, they may have a very large service that you could run multiple lines out of. Either way, this is where the special skills of a rigging gaffer come into play as they can properly plan out the power run. I'm taking a few liberties here and simplifying the cable runs so I can get to my main talk on laying out data. So I'm just showing you the major power hubs, but every country has different standards and requirements for running power, so make sure to follow them. Looking at this from the perspective of a set electrician, you know you need to pull out power everywhere. What if you start adding more T12s on the ground here in this back area to punch through windows? Well, you need additional 100 amp dim lines, which could be rat packs you throw in near these 600 boxes I've put on both sides of the set. If this was run from the dimmer room, old school, you would need to run maybe 100 to 200 feet of cable per line. By making these into rat packs, you just throw them near the 600 boxes. And if you need to add more, no problem. You can just add more dimmers on the fly right there. If you're shooting deep inside the set, you need power you can pull out. Lunch boxes that can come in through doorways or windows, depending on which way you are looking. So you scatter the big distro boxes at main junctions and then have pull out lunch boxes coiled up, ready to come out to power camera, DIT, sound, and all the little stuff. So now that we've laid out the power, what about data? Well, it's very similar in a location like this. In general, everywhere you put a distro box, you should have data because where you plug in a light to receive power, you should have data in that same spot so that the cable runs the same path to the light if you are doing an all hardwired set. That's why you may have seen these smart stingers around at times or people taping a DMX cable with a power cable together. It makes a lot of sense in many ways. Now that we have the opportunity to go wireless, a lot of times we just do that for simplicity's sake. But if you need to run a fast effect or are worried about wireless interference from the camera transmitters, then you need to have hardline DMX everywhere. And the bigger the set you're on, the more crucial this becomes to eliminate any issues. Now, believe me, I am the biggest proponent of wireless DMX, but I still like to hardline whenever possible because it's just safer and more reliable. Especially for a stage setup where you have fixtures hanging out for a few months, you don't wanna have to worry about a receiver going dead in the air or losing connection somewhere. If it's hanging on a stage, there should be no reason you can't hardline your fixtures. Now, if you're on a location, if a fixture is easy to power because there's a wall outlet nearby in some store or shop, but it's not easy to get data there because maybe it's across the street, then use your best judgment. So in a traditional full-size console setup, your programmer would be back in or near the dimmer room when you're on stage. You would run two cables from the board, a main line and a backup ethernet cable to the center point above the set. So this would go to an ethernet switch and from this switch, you branch out in what is a star configuration to your gateways to get hardline DMX and from there, you can go to your lights. But in today's world, the programmer is not in a room locked away. They're on set right next to wherever the DIT sets up. So you need to be able to connect to the network from virtually anywhere the DIT may set up, which means you need to have ethernet switches everywhere because DIT is constantly moving to be near the shop for the DP's convenience. If you wanna be as economical as possible to save on renting more gateways and optos than you need, it takes a bit of planning. Start thinking about where you are laying out your switches. These are usually your cheapest purchase, but beware because if you think you're running SACN through an unmanaged switch, you're not really running multicast SACN. It's being broadcast everywhere, which is not what it's intended for. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but when you get into a lot of universes, that's where you can run into some serious problems. Regardless, the more switches you have around set, the easier it will be to plug in your console wherever the DIT may end up. So let's start laying these around the map. Now, obviously this is just the backbone of the network because you aren't plugging your lights into RJ45 ports most of the time. 
you need to get to DMX. So you go from your switches to DMX gateways. Now, if you start throwing DMX gateways around the set where you are needing them between your fixtures, now those gateways are kind of in no man's land and you can see the mess starting to form. But most gateways either have only four ports or eight ports, and that is often not enough ports to branch out from to hit your lights. So you then throw one, two, three, four opto splitters underneath or nearby that are connected to the gateway so that you have enough ports to branch out from for each universe on your gateway. And here's where the real mess happens. Because if you don't have all of these in one place and in some sort of container, it's going to be very hard to track down what cable is going where. And I don't know about you, but my riggers never label cables. So when you look at something like this, I mean, you tell me, is this acceptable? On top of all that, you have the problem of what happens when you add more lights in an area. Now you have to add a gateway or opto splitter. And if you don't have a device nearby that you can plug into because you spread your gateways out the way the plot was and didn't leave room for error, now you're stuck tracing cables for half an hour looking for the next best place to plug in. So you have a bunch of these data colonies just thrown or at best taped together in a mess with cables going everywhere that could be easily unplugged. And every time you are setting this up for a show, it's a process because you have to connect everything and figure out a way that these can all live together safely. And you're IPing the gateway, you're having to order a ton of five foot DMX jumpers to get your optos connected to your gateways. You're using a bunch of cube taps to get this monstrosity connected. And it's just a mess, as you can see from different productions I've been on and the way they've tackled this for better or for worse. Plus, it's time consuming to set this up every time for every show. That's why I decided to build my data cubes. This is a robust, weather resistant, modular housing I built that allows you to put virtually any box size switch, gateway, or opto splitter in it for a clean but rugged data solution. I have two sizes and I'm trying out a few different housings I've been testing on set. So if you're interested in this, look in the description for the link to get more info and please comment below. Now people have been doing this for a while, but with rack mount cases. So everything they have is a full 1U rack size, which is great, but as you can see, it can get very unwieldy and heavy to say the least. Sometimes you want something nice and small to fit box size devices that you may already own. Regardless, you need a clean data solution and a bunch of them because you're going to be putting these all around set. Again, ideally on every big power box, but honestly, you could be a little bit more strategic about it because having a ton of these can get expensive. The main thing to take away here is that this is already set up. You just have to IP the gateways at the beginning of the project to fit within your IP scheme. So it's saving you valuable time at every location, every stage, every production. You just place a box, plug it into power and connect them all via ethernet. A whole network can be laid out in minutes. It really can't get simpler than that. You can have virtually anyone place these around set but if you tell an electrician who isn't up to speed on DMX and networking to, uh, hey, uh, set up this network switch over there with uh, this gateway and uh, you know maybe a couple opto splitters, we all know that could be a major disaster. By putting the data cubes at every major power junction, you don't have to worry about lights popping up you weren't prepared for because you have data now where you have power. So if you need to add another row of sky panels overhead for another softbox, you're set and you're saving time tracing down a mess of lines. And time is the winning argument every time you talk to a producer. Would you rather have the possibility of wasting 30 minutes of production time tracing down networking issues on set when you have Brad Pitt standing nearby? Or do you spend a little extra money for better organization that prevents the chaos from happening? That is the argument you have to make to producers. But unfortunately, until they see it fail, they often don't want to spend the money. Regardless, when the set electricians bring in a specific light to set, they can simply set the universe on the gateway and plug in the light. Once you get into this workflow, it's super nice to have any universe you need available all over set. This allows you to be super flexible in the way you patch lights. You're no longer shoving everything you can into one universe. So to wrap this plan up, I would have these bigger data cubes here and the smaller data cubes closer to set. Now for location rigs, this is very tough to do because real world logistics come into play. 
What if you are shooting in Chinatown in New York City and you have a lift two blocks away and you can't cross the street with cable because of the bike lanes or the streets aren't going to be closed during the shoot? How do you get data over there? Because unlike power, where you can easily just park a van generator next to the lift and not have to worry about power crossing anything and connecting all together, it doesn't work like that with data. Your whole network has to be connected in order for you to be able to connect to all of your lights from the board. You could just use a regular lumen radio transmitter and receiver, but what if you needed more than one universe over there for say, any light that may come off your truck that is patched into whatever universe? What if the gaffer or DP all of a sudden need eight S360s over there in pixel mode to do some show critical lighting effect? That's four universes. Are you gonna put up four transmitters and four receivers across the street? No way. What you want is a point to point system. You can find some of the most popular ones through Ubiquity and basically these point to point systems are wireless ethernet. You plug one in on one side of the road into an ethernet switch and plug in its pair in a switch on the other side of the road. And voila, you have your entire network across the street. Now you just plug in a gateway and you can pull any universe you want from your network. Pretty freaking cool, right? Obviously the issue with this is these are definitely a more advanced to configure and you have to know what you are doing. Otherwise you can have trouble sending lighting protocols across it, which may be blocked if you don't have a specific setting checked. This should definitely not be for everyday use if you can avoid them. It's a specialty item and should be treated as such. That's why they pay us the big bucks, right? Plus, if something blocks the light of sight connection between the two, you're screwed. You don't have data going through, which means your effect could lag or stop altogether. The way I would approach location sets is having a powerful transmitter like the Lumen Radio Stardust that you can wheel around wherever you are that can take care of all of the immediate stuff you are going to see around camera. I know some people are scared of wireless, but honestly, you'd be surprised at how far it can reach now with solid signal and no lag. Then wherever you can't reach, be strategic about it and either run ethernet or DMX there or to another transmitter and receiver that can extend your run or use a receiver that's getting data from your onset stardust that you plug into a new transmitter and you pair a new receiver to this transmitter and have this extend the signal wirelessly like the point to point but it's omnidirectional. So you don't have to necessarily be within line of sight. Obviously it's only one universe, but if you plan it out well, it can hop to wherever you need it. Of course, this is all dependent on the location. For small location sets, like you're shooting at a house, it makes a lot more sense since you are in a contained area to corner the set with power and data cubes. It would be a simplified stage rig, but it would take you just a few minutes to drop these in key spots and then run ethernet between them. I hope that clarifies some of the mystery of how we run data on big movies, and you can see it can get quite expensive, but by strategically planning out your network and using some of the techniques that we've talked about, you can make this work on any size production. Good luck, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.